I'm not sure why I've been having so much trouble coming up with good cold opens lately. Maybe it's because the weather's been so hot outside. Hot weather, cold opens. See what I... one and all and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. It is time for my monthly playlist video once again. Well actually as I'm filming it technically it's not time for it because it's only the 18th of the month uh, but there are a couple of reasons why I'm recording it so early. First of all uh, I've actually done all of the listening I need to do to legitimately do a playlist video but also this is my last free weekend before a my vacation. I'm gonna be busy next weekend and then I'm off to play and stuff so I just figured if I didn't do it now, you're not going to get a playlist video this month. So I figure jump on the time, uh, uh, seize the day, as it were, and record a video for you guys. So uh, yes, this is just a video every, every month that I do when I just talk about the stuff I've listened to. And before that, uh, I go into what I call the liner notes, just miscellaneous talk about whatever might be on my mind. Not much this time, except a, a quick little rant about Record Store Day. Uh, but first of all, recognizing the passing of Biz Markey who was, as I, I read in uh, social media posts and whatnot, he was referred to as the clown prince of hip-hop. So I assume his stuff is uh, was often um, humorous in nature. Uh, I've never checked out Bismarcky's stuff, uh, not for any particular reason. I just, well, I'm not much into hip-hop, as you guys know by now, though my frequent watchers. But uh, I might have to check out his stuff, as, you know, unfortunately, the fact that it took his death for me to... Uh, pay any attention to him, you know. That's human nature, I guess. I've said that before. Uh, so anyway, yes, uh, rest in peace, Bismarcky. And but uh, next up is my little rant about Record Store Day. It's just going to take a few minutes because it's probably stuff that most people who rant against Record Store Day rant about. And yes, you guys have not seen uh, me talk about Record Store Day hardly at all, really. Uh, you know, all of my, my subscriber feed on YouTube is full of people talking about their Record Store Day finds and whatnot. And uh, more power to you guys who actually do enjoy and love Record Store Day. Uh, I don't talk about it for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, I seldom, almost never, see anything that interests me on the release lists for Record Store Day. Uh, it's so rare, in fact, that a couple of years ago, I just stopped looking over the lists altogether. So if I don't buy anything on Record Store Day, there are no new purchases to show you guys in a video, so there's no real reason to bring up the subject, right? Except now when I'm talking about it in a rant. Well, semi-rant, rant-ish, I guess. Uh, the second reason is that most of my feelings about Record Store Day, or what it's become now, are negative, as I've been hinting at, and I don't like to sound like a whiner or complainer. Plus, I like to keep this channel as positive as I can in terms of content, so I just tend to avoid the subject. But since some of you out there might be wondering why I don't talk about Record Store Day, allow me to explain in as non-whiny a way as possible. Now, don't get me wrong, Record Store Day started out as a great idea. I was all for it, you know, to bring attention to the plight of record stores, which at the time were not doing well, to put it mildly. I mean, and they needed a boost in sales. I mean, they're not really coasting now, but still, uh, it was such a great idea to bring attention to the record stores. But in the years since its inception, Record Store Day has turned into a ridiculously bloated and over-commercialized pile of nonsense. My biggest complaint about Record Store Day is probably the same one as most people have, and that is the flippers. Those greedy, opportunistic assholes out there who have absolutely no interest whatsoever in music and scoop up all these limited edition titles, some of which are limited to a stupidly small run, just to turn around and sell them online for five times their retail price. Of course, it's legal, but like so many other things in this great US of A, just because it's legal doesn't mean it's right. You might call it capitalism, but I call it exploitation. Because what about us genuine music lovers who are interested in buying a title because we truly love the artist and would actually unseal the record, listen to it and enjoy it, and keep it in our collection well cared for for years if not decades to come? Now to be honest, the only Record Store Day title I've been interested in for the last four or five years has been Hail Satin, the hybrid live recording slash Bee Gees covers album that the Foo Fighters released under the name The Dee Gees during this most recent Record Store Day drop. Well, I'm out of luck because it already appears to have been sold out, and now the flipper assholes won $150 for it. And while we're on the subject of Record Store Day Grails, I'd also love to have the Bleachers exclusive Terrible Thrills Volume 2 covers album, but it's even worse at $200. Again, I want it not because it's especially valuable and not because I would want to turn around and sell it. I wouldn't. 
I won it because not only do I love the songs featured on it, but I like several of the artists who perform on it. Now, if you're one of the benevolent Record Store Day music hounds who buy the titles for your own personal enjoyment, God bless you, and I hope you had a great Record Store Day. I really do. But yeah, to cut my rant short, that's why I am not a fan of Record Store Day. Uh, that plus I go to the record stores nearly every week throughout the year anyway, so for me, every day is Record Store Day. Okay, now that that stuff's out of the way, let's go ahead and get on with my playlist proper. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the CDs out of the way first, just because in last month's playlist was a CD special when I talked about nothing but CDs. So let's get those out of the way first. Uh, the first one here is, uh, you might recall in my last Bargain Bag video, there was a classical compilation CD I talked about that uh, I really enjoyed just one piece on that CD, but that wasn't enough reason for me to keep it. But I said I was going to seek out an, a full recording of that piece because there was a story behind it. This is this one. This is Jan Lizetsky, I believe is the correct way to pronounce it. He is a Polish-Canadian classical pianist, uh, born and raised in Canada to a Polish immigrant family. And yes, the piece in question is Mozart's Piano Concerto Number no. 21, and this contains number 20 and number 21, because the Allegro movement of the 21st Piano Concerto by Mozart was used in a computer-synthesized version as the theme song for a favorite TV series of mine from when I was a kid back in the early 80s. It was a show called Whiz Kids, and it was basically about a group of teenagers who uh, solved crimes with the help of a newspaper reporter and the kind of the, the hindrance in a way of a the detective in the local police squad. The detective was trying to keep the kids out of harm's way, of course. But anyway, uh, it was used obviously in a very, very truncated version as the main title. And I just loved that piece of music. I don't know why. And yeah, that was probably the first clue why I, that I would get way into music was because I paid attention to a lot of the TV themes back in uh, you know the 80s and stuff when they actually took a couple minutes to make a TV theme as opposed to the five or ten second things that they do now. But anyway, for some reason the theme song to that show, even though it ran for less than a season and has never been released on DVD incidentally, come on guys, what's the, what's, what's the delay, um, has stuck in my, in my head for all this time and so it was delightful to hear a piece here and a piece there and a piece there of what was assembled into the TV theme. So yes, and uh, in general, this guy is a very, very talented pianist, I've got to say, and it was backed by an orchestra from I'm not sure where, because they have a different name. It might be a German orchestra or possibly an Austrian orchestra, but anyway. Wonderful album. It's one of the few titles I have. I pr can probably count on one hand the number of CDs I have of individual classical works. I have The Planets by Gustav Holst and The Four Seasons by Vivaldi and a couple others. And then there's this one. So yes, a good, uh, nice little deep dive, I guess you could say, into a single classical work, or actually two works in this case. It's two symphonies or two concertos. But yeah, very good stuff. And this next one, uh, you will recall me talking about this group in, I believe it was another bargain bag video a couple months ago. It is a local Eugene, Oregon group called Lazoo. I found another one of their CDs. It was uh, the one that I found in that bargain bag was a keeper because I really enjoyed it. And when I was at Epic Seconds uh, a few weeks ago, I found another of their CDs. This is the one before it, I believe. The one before uh, Zooforia was the one I had uh, previously. And it's excellent. This one is actually all instrumental. And I believe, I think the one, if I remember correctly, the other one, Zooforia, was part vocal and part instrumental. So yeah great funky jazz type stuff. I just love it from front to back and 18 songs on here. So they just jam pack this thing for a nice long run time. Very, very entertaining. I've got to say, and you will recognize these next few names uh, after giving you a couple of who are they kind of names. Uh, these next few are going to definitely ring some bells. Van Halen, their two CD compilation, the best of both worlds. Uh, how can you knock Van Halen? I mean, one of the preeminent hard rock groups of the eighties, 80s and 90s and on. Uh, I, had re I had had this collection a long time ago, but it was in the um, soft cover version. It was a digipack, but it actually had uh, the trays that held the discs. But I was uh, I had given it up a long time ago. I'm not sure why, probably because of space considerations. Uh, but I was at, I think it was Barnes & Noble a few weeks back and saw this one was actually in a jewel case. So I decided, go ahead and get it. I'd kind of been regretting giving that one 
up uh, earlier anyway, so yeah, pick it up. And then another two disc compilation of a guitar artist, we've got Stevie Ray Vaughan and Double Trouble, the essential two disc set. Um, this I actually got from a good friend of mine. He was uh, shedding some CDs and offered this one to me, and I gladly took it. And yes, great, great stuff. I mean, Stevie Ray Vaughan was a fantastic blues guitarist and, and blues artist. My sister enjoyed him. She kind of started getting into blues during the last few years of her life. And uh, there was one of his CDs, which at the time I didn't care much for, so I actually ended up getting rid of it. I, I had a big giveaway after I listened to all my sister's CDs. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't want to give money, uh, get money for them, so I offered them up to friends. And uh, that was in that list that got to given away. But yes, I'm glad that I... Uh, took my friend up on this and uh, reintroduced myself to Stevie Ray Vaughan, a wickedly talented guitarist and great musician. And then in uh, my, my last CD title is also relates to my sister. This is Lost Highway by, by Bon Jovi. Now I could swear that this CD was in my sister's collection because I'm, I have a distinct memory of listening to it in the car on one of the times when we, uh, I rode with her between my house and her house. Uh, but uh, when I got the CD, her CD collection, uh, I inherited it, and my brother-in-law brought it up to me. The CD was not in there, so it may have gone to um, his son or grandchildren. May have decided to, you know, pick over and see what CDs they wanted out of the collection before he brought it up, which was totally okay with me. I mean, why not? But yes, uh, wonderful to hear it again. And this was where Bon Jovi first started dabbling in country, which they would do for, what, their next album or two after this? Yes, they feature Big and Rich on one song and Leanne Rhymes on another. So, hey. Country, in a strange way, you wouldn't think that country would suit Bon Jovi, but it did, I think. And uh, I'm kind of glad that they've sort of moved back to rock. I'm glad that they didn't stay in country. But, you know, I wouldn't mind them going back to country and dabbling it, uh, in it in a bit in, in the future as I try to speak. And now let's go on to the vinyl. How, how about we do that next this time? And this is going to be something that you guys don't see very much in a playlist video of mine. I, when I go talk about vinyl, I'm usually talking about older stuff. But this one is actually was just released last year. And again, this relates to a recent video, my recent uh, Spank and Platters video. When I reviewed that uh, Leslie Jordan album, I was talking about, hmm, maybe I ought to check out the, the Brothers Osborne at some point. I decided to pick up Skeletons. This is their most recent album released last year. I, I enjoyed it. I don't regret picking it up at all. Uh, I picked it up without having heard a single song, so it was it was a, a blind or or deaf in this case purchase. Uh, very good stuff. I, I just I had some money to kill, so I uh, figured why not go ahead and pick it up and give these guys a try. Gotta say, as, as I said, I don't regret picking it up. Very very good country stuff. Uh, better than some country stuff I've heard in recent months and years. So yeah. Really good stuff. I would recommend Brothers Osborne, and, and I think this is not going to be my last album purchase of theirs. This is their third album, I believe. They put out three so far. This is their most recent. Uh, so yeah, I'm probably going to uh, dip a little bit further back in their catalog pretty soon. So good stuff. And then we have a jazz album, a classic jazz album, well, I guess you'd say. Uh, the Yellow Jackets, their self-titled debut. Uh, this is, I guess, you know, the more fusion jazz or, or uh, contemporary jazz, I guess, uh, rather than the classic. This was put out in 1981. And yeah, just recently, I think I talked about it in a uh, playlist video, I had picked up uh, Spyro Gyra's first album, and they are another uh, contemporary jazz group that came about right about the same time as the Yellow Jackets. A fun trivia note here, I was first introduced to the Yellow Jackets music by way of the soundtrack from Star Trek IV The Voyage Home. Yes, they were featured, uh, they, they did a couple of uh, original songs, they contributed those to the soundtrack of the movie because it was set in uh, uh, San Francisco on Earth in the mid-80s, the mid so they had to have some contemporary music to put in the soundtrack. So, Yeah, so yeah, that was a good first taste of the Yellow Jackets, and this is a nice continuation on uh, their stuff. So uh, yeah, not unlike Spyro Gyra, I will probably be picking up some more Yellow Jackets stuff in the near future. So yeah, good, good jazz. Now this next album uh, is probably the one that I had the most fun listening to out of all the ones I'm talking about today. This is a duo called Homer and Jethro. And yes, they were popular in the 50s. So, well, this album was put out in 63, and this was not their first album. So they probably started out in the 50s, if not before. But uh, yeah, they did mostly lighthearted, funny stuff, novelty songs kind of thing. But I believe some, every once in a while, they would dabble in more serious stuff. And as you can see by the, the cover and by the title, Zany Songs of the 30s, this is the more lighter side of Homer and Jethro. Uh, I played this when my mother was in the other room, and she recognized some of the songs from hearing them when she was a kid. 
So, and I'm sure it's some stuff that uh, my grandparents would probably know and love. Uh, hold tight, hold tight. That was uh, made famous by the Andrews sisters back in the 40s. But yes, a bunch of funny, funny stuff. Uh, Three Little Fishies. Uh, that one has a lyric, did em dad em wad em chew, or something like that. That's a cute, silly little song. Mersey Dotes. That's a, a song that a lot of people, probably one, probably one of the songs that you are most liable to have heard before. Mersey Dotes. And then uh, Bamir Bistuchon. That was another one that the Andrew sisters made popular. But yeah, funny stuff. Oh, The Music Goes Round and Round was the closer on this album. And... I cannot remember who, but a, a jazz artist made that one popular as well. So, so yes, some songs that the Homer and Jethro took as novelty songs, but other artists made um, serious or semi-serious renditions of earlier in in uh, recorded music. So yeah, very, very, very fun album, and I'm going to be listening to this one a few times more and possibly seeking out more of Homer and Jethro's stuff. Lots and lots of fun. And then we're on to, again, the more popular artists that we have heard of. Probably a lot of you guys had never heard of Homer and Jethro. But here we've got Willie Nelson and his album, Always On My Mind. Of course, the title track was one of his most famous tracks ever throughout his entire career. But yes, a bunch of great songs on here. Do Right Woman, Do Right Man. That Was was that a Ray Charles original, I think? I'm not sure. And then A Wider Shade of Pale, yes, by Procol Harm. He covers that one, that one on here. Uh, Let It Be Me, the one that uh, the Everly Brothers made popular. He does a gorgeous rendition. I mean, hey, it's Willie Nelson. He he can't not do a gorgeous rendition of that of songs. But yes, a lot of great stuff. Last Thing I Needed, First Thing This Morning, another one of the songs. And I think I think that was one that he originally recorded himself. I don't know if it was made famous by anybody else, but Bridge Over Troubled Water, the Simon Garfunkel song, is on here. So yeah, if you're if you're looking to dabble in Willie Nelson, I would recommend this as one of the albums to go for. Very, very good. Lot, really entertaining. I really enjoy that one. Then we have a group that's, uh, yeah, the Manhattan Transfer. They, some people might consider them a punchline. They might consider these guys a bit of a cheesy group. But yes, vocal jazz is what they are. Uh, but yes, this was a very enjoyable uh, album. It starts out with Route 66, the song that uh, Nat King Cole made famous. And uh, it, it ends, one of the things that really stuck out for me about this album was it ends with Unchained Melody, but a really upbeat version of Unchained Melody. And of course, you know, the only ones I've ever heard have been like the you know, more subdued ballad renditions. But they end the album on a high note with an upbeat rendition of Unchained Melody. And I would recommend listening to that, especially if all the other renditions you've ever heard have been, you know, the quiet, balladish, uh, Righteous Brothers rendition and, and whatnot. So. Yes, uh, lots of good stuff here. Uh, My Cat Fell in the Well. Well, well, well is another one of the songs on here. And yes, uh, this I guess this whole playlist has been a bit of a, has a bit of a funny uh, novelty sort of theme to it. Uh, so yeah, but yeah, very fun, enjoyable album. And I picked up several uh, Manhattan Transfer albums all at once, and they were all like two or three dollars a piece. So it's like it wasn't a huge investment. But uh, gotta say, it's fun music. If you like vocal jazz, check out the Manhattan Transfer. And then rounding out my playlist for today, we have the cassettes. And I believe all of them are from, oh, no, all but one, were from the huge cassette lot from uh, my mother's friend Sue that I unboxed a few months back. Uh, still finding plenty of enjoyable, good stuff in there. Uh, the last month or so, I've been going through them a little bit more slowly than I had before, but hopefully things will pick back up in that department. But anyway, first one here is Crystal Gale, a greatest hits uh tape of hers a uh, classic country artist um, her heyday I think was like in the 70s pretty much the only song on here that I recognized was don't it make my brown eyes blue one of the uh, classic 70s country ballads beautiful beautiful song uh, but yeah the rest of the tape is uh, pretty darn good too it has what 10 songs on here so yeah I don't know that I, I will necessarily dip more into Crystal Gale stuff but uh, that's a very nice tape to have and it's uh, definitely going to be a keeper as are all of these by the way Next one we have another Ned Spurlock tape. Uh, yes, I, I got, uh, what, three or four Ned Spurlock tapes in Sue's collection. And he is a hammer dulcimerist. I guess that's the noun that you would use for a, a player of that instrument. And this is a uh, an album called As Time Goes By, and it concentrates on uh, songs from movies, movie soundtracks. Uh, the theme from The Thorn Birds, which I was not familiar with. Uh, the theme from Romeo and Juliet, the 60s uh, Zeffirelli movie. Uh, As Time Goes By, the title track, The Windmills of Your Mind, uh, the theme from The Godfather, which I thought was kind of a, a bit of an odd choice to put on here, 
and then uh, The Rose, the Bette Midler classic from this that uh, movie. And so, yeah, lots of interesting stuff on here, and uh, he's enjoyable. I've got to say, much more enjoyable than I thought a guy named Ned Spurlock would ever be. Anyway, uh, next one up here was uh, kind of an interesting one. Herb Alpert, you guys have all heard of him. He's a, a classic jazz artist, started out in the 60s with uh, the Tijuana Brass Orchestra. Well, not really an orchestra, so like five guys. But uh, And this one takes a little bit of a different turn. This was released in 1987, and it was produced predominantly by Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. So it has a bit of a, a late 80s R&B-ish kind of a vibe to it, more of a contemporary pop sound than a jazz sound. So it was an interesting interesting side of Herb Albert. And it was this one came yeah after his minor resurgence in the early 80s. I've got a couple of records. I think I showed one to you in a, another recent playlist video. Rise, I think, was the name of that album. And that was that the title track was a minor hit in the early 80s. And so he was, I guess, updating his sound for this album. Not bad. I like his earlier stuff more, but uh, I definitely will keep this one because how can you not keep a Herb Albert album? That, that's my belief anyway. Then coming up here is one that I actually bought up in Portland a few months back, or last month or whenever it was that I went up to Portland, Slade and their album You Boys Make Big Noise. Yes, this was one of the predecessors to their album Keep Your Hands Off My Power Supply. That was the U.S. title. It had a different title internationally. But just uh, not bad at all. I've got to say it's kind of in the same vein. Not as many memorable songs as on Keep Your Hands Off My Power Supply, but good stuff here. Um, Sing, Shout, Knock Yourself Out. Uh, one of the standout songs here. Uh, that's that's what friends are for, which is not a cover of the ballad from uh, Dionne Warwick and whoever did that. Uh, we won't give in. That was another good one. So, yeah, I recommend checking out Slade's discography. They they have some good stuff uh, hiding in there uh, amongst their their big radio hits. And then, last but not least, for my playlist and for the cassettes portion of my playlist, Doctor Hook. Uh, this is a compilation, I believe. Uh, sharing the Night Together. Yes, this had some of their biggest hits on it. And uh, When You're in Love with a Beautiful Woman, that was one of their big hits. And it was, and that's a beautiful song. Wonderful song. Great AM radio type of song. You Make My Pants Want to Get Up and Dance. That's another standout track on there. Not only for its title, but uh, just it's a good song. And I Got Stoned and Missed It. Another one of their classic songs. These guys were kind of a light-hearted... Uh, tongue-in-cheek humorish kind of artist. I mean, they had some they had some serious songs like When You're In Love With A Be Beautiful Woman. That's a serious song. But they had songs they were more, probably most famous for their song The Cover of the Rolling Stone, which was, that was more on the novelty side of things, and that was actually not on this tape. So I actually do have a compilation of Dr. Hook, which actually has a fairly different track listing from this one. So yeah, these do not have much overlap, this one and the CD that I have. So so yes, I'm going to keep this one. Uh, and it's, it's, it's very, very fun, very enjoyable, great stuff. And I'm probably, I'm thinking about seeking out more of Dr. Hook's stuff. It's a, a very, very enjoyable band. And just like that, it's over. That'll do it for my playlist video for the month of July 2021. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.